Okay, now I'd like to introduce the first keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Songju Kang. He is the president of Korea Post, and I'm sure all of your countries have postal services and post office. And basically, Korea Post has been providing postal services for over 100 years, and uh, they've been also providing some financial services. I'm not sure exactly how many years ago, but he's in charge of both postal services and financial services. And uh, uh, Dr. Kang has been looking at um, blockchain technology to be used in their services. So he's going to talk about uh, what they're doing at, at Korea Post. So please join me welcoming Song Joo Kang. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for actually your attention. And actually, I really, really appreciate actually Dr. Hong's effort to make this event. And this is my kind of great honor to give what's going on in this country and in this, my organization, Korea Post. Uh, as uh, I am working right now in the real world, practical world, I'm going to make some voice to, to the academia. What's going on? How we maximize our business by using blockchain technology for the Korean people, not only actually Korea, but also any other, many other countries as well. So I'm going to make some kind of, you know, my experience and uh, some <clears throat> uh, recommendations or some requests. So I want to hear or I want to kind of, you know, uh, utilize what have you, academia, has been done so far to develop IT technology or even or to accelerate innovation. Uh, let me introduce Korea Post very briefly. We start our business a long time ago, long, long time ago. And actually, we are in right now here. We are dealing with three areas of business, basically postal business. All of uh, more than 200 countries in the world actually dealing with basically postal world postal business, but uh, because of those kind of business now is changing dramatically. Uh, we are dealing with some financial business like uh, savings or insurance as well. Every day, actually today, uh, we are delivering around uh, 16 uh, million items. And today we transact, the financial transaction, total amount of financial transaction is maybe 50, 40, 50 billion US dollars. The number of transactions may be uh, 30, 30 million transactions. So every day we are thinking how to innovate or how to increase the quality of service for the Korean people. So nowadays, many countries, many uh, postal business people, all of, uh, from time to time, I have a meeting with uh, the leaders from any many other countries like China, Japan, US, or Netherlands, India, Vietnam, or Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire. Many leaders actually, whenever I have a meeting with those people, they are thinking of how to change our business. Because of this business, postal business, has been started long, long time ago, more than 100 years ago. So meaning very outdated business model. We have to change our business to the little bit, you know, uh, more fancy one or more better service for the people. So I'm thinking or I'm observing kind of postal, I mean the paradigm shift in postal business. Basically technological change has been actually caused this kind of, you know, the paradigm shift. From previous analog based business to the more uh, digitalized business model. We should to follow, we should to develop. For the sustainable development, sustainable business model, or more innovative actual way of our business. There are many ways and in many 
you know, efforts, many experience, not only in Korea Post, but also many other uh, the postal business bodies as well. Right now, because actually this meeting, we are talking about blockchain and cryptocurrency. Today, I want to more focusing on blockchain rather than cryptocurrency. Because uh, many countries, you know, financial you know, regulation bodies, some, some bodies, they, you know, kind of really has some more positive, actually, uh, attitude. But right now in Korea, we have some negative, positive, I don't know, actually. You have your own you know, perspective. But uh, because mainly our business is uh, more focusing on uh, logistics area, I want to more focusing on uh, uh, logistics or postal service area. Of course, I'm going to introduce some kind of you know, financial service area uh, which are based on uh, blockchain technology. Last year, I provide, <coughs> uh, basically, when I uh, kind of started my, my position uh, two years ago, at that time, very few people uh, mentioned, uh, about, mentioned blockchain or cryptocurrency. But last year, suddenly, many people recommended me, suggested me, we have to adopt. We have to change our business model by using blockchain technology. So there are many ways to, you know, to uh, adopt this new technological trend. There are many ways, top-down model, bottom-up model, and many approaches, technological approach, Social cultural approach, you know, behavioral approach. There are many ways, many strategies. But basically, uh, according to my experience, we should know, we should understand what those technology, what those kind of new innovative approaches are. So basically, we should understand first what blockchain technology is. What's the principle? What's the impact? How does technology change our business, traditional business model? That is the first. So we spent one year, last year, to understand what this blockchain is. But still, like, you, know, you know, we are you know, kind of going this way, that way. We make some, some progress and some, you know, not failures, some problems we found. So there are many ways. Still, we are, you know, kind of traveling, you know, this way, that way. So I want to introduce some cases, four cases actually today. So what's going on in Korea, especially Korea Post? There are many areas: banking side, you know, insurance side, bank, uh, uh, logistics side, health, education, and entertainment. There are many, many business areas. Well, Korea Post, we are dealing with basically logistics and financial service. I want to talk about those kind of area first. How we deal with, how to understand, how to apply this technology in our area. First one, <coughs> postal area. Postal area means traditional logistics, but you know, recently the market share of the logistics, private market, they have more than you know. Two thirds of the market is going to private market. Korea Post just right now market share is less than ten percent. Traditional letter service is kind of a national, you know, monopoly. All of those, all of countries, letter service is monopoly. But you know, those kind of the parcel or usually when you think of the logistics, that area is market uh, mechanism is driven now. But let's say. 20, 30 years ago, usually that is monopolized or duopolized. But now it has been changed dramatically. So meaning, we traditional operator, we have to survive. We have to you know, maintain our business more sustainable. So in that point of view, actually, we, think, we thought actually digital postal office box or digital box business. So right now, this approach, this model, we, are, uh, we, we have some kind of basic strategy. And actually, a couple of months ago, in, in March, we start to develop this new business model. Maybe late this year, we're going to provide a little bit kind of test service.
based on blockchain technology. So why we choose or why we think of this technology or this paradigm? As I mentioned before, changing mailing business dramatically recently during several decades, you know, letters, traditional letters, are now, you know, mostly changed on mobile platform. You know, Facebook, there are many, many good technologies. 10, 20 year ago, years ago, many people prefer to write letters. At that time, no SNS, no, no Facebook, you know, nothing. But now, in Korea, actually, the other day, we didn't have a chance to stop by elementary school. Those kids, children, actually, they do not wear their actually postal offices. Ah, they didn't know. Actually, who, who are the, the mailmen, postmen, and who are the private, you know, it's kind of career? Sometimes they confused. So meaning, the traditional, you know, letter service, postal service model has been actually gone. So that is kind of, you know, basic uh, reason or basic background. Several reasons, you know, data protection issues nowadays, and, you know, reliability issues, and workload. Unfortunately, a couple of days ago, we lost three postmen. Uh, yesterday and actually even today, many actual Korean media, they criticize actually our, you know, the business uh, model. So, you know, many countries are suffering from those kind of security issues. Because of traditionally, our the mailman or the postman, they are suffering from those kind of uh, hard work or the heavy workload stress or those kind of problems. So we need to solve all of these challenges at the same time or whatever energy. We have to deal with this technology or this, uh, the problems by using uh, blockchain technology. Many ways, this is a first phase or the outcome of first phase of our development. We're gonna focus on these four issues, four areas. Each Korean person, we have 50 million Korean people and we have around 20 million Korean business entities. Total 70 million you know, entities. We're gonna create some kind of code system. And we're gonna give those kind of 70 million entities, you mean the unique entities. Then we can you know, use, utilize those P code, we name P code. Mail delivery. Mail means not only the letter, but also many other items, parcels, boxes, and et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna use actually to speak code to actual mail delivery. Of course, you know, confirmation and the payment. So if somebody visit physically postal office or via online visit, they can, you know, person or corporate government entity Foreign, foreign business people, whatever. Physically, they can contact or they can contact via online. They can ask, ask online delivery or offline delivery as well. So because we have very good reputation on offline delivery system, offline business model. So we're gonna maximize our potential to, you know, to, we're gonna expand actually our, or the, Mm, our reputation to the online business area. Of course, in this area, many private markets already, Amazon, Alibaba, there are many good companies. Not only those kind of companies, but also many small startups already. Maybe somebody who well, started in these eight cases maybe. But actually, we are not familiar with online delivery system. So that's why actually we started this, uh, this business, this, uh, the service. And, and we're gonna kind of develop mobile app. Then maybe actually uh, contents confirmation or the payment, or they can you know, check uh, the, uh, the letters or their parcels online, the real time base. This is a basic uh, kind of service flow. All of these transactions or all of these uh, events are stored in one block. As I mentioned, today, uh, 16 billion uh, items we're gonna deliver today. So meaning 16 million blocks is going to create. 
for today's business. Of course, the financial transaction as well. But basically, we, we're going to start on postal business first. Maybe late this year, we're going to provide some uh, pilot test uh, service. Let's say around 10,000 10, actually, the blocks, uh, 10,000 uh, individuals or some corporates or the government agents, we're going to select make it to, uh, selected the, those kind of entities, they're going to use this service first, maybe late this year. So we're going to start this business uh, from this year. Maybe actually next, next year, we're going to use in commercial base. So meaning uh, the potential of blockchain, there are many ways. But this one, this, what is thinking actually, because nowadays mobile messaging, messaging services is very popular in Korea. So meaning traditional letter service is decreasing. So that's why we uh, thought of this, uh, the new business model. And from now, I'm going to provide a little bit uh, the cases on financial sector as well. Uh, money transfer or the foreign currency remittance it's very popular because globalized society and many private banks or the commercial banks, they are providing this business already. Or the startups, they have developed this one. Uh, last year when I stopped by Shenzhen, China, the, the subsidiary company of the Tencent, WeBank, they have developed this business and they started their service already. But unfortunately in Korea, there are many regulations or something. So <clears throat> right now, actually we are developing stage so maybe uh, late this year, no, not maybe it's past. Maybe next year, we're gonna start actually this uh, the money transfer service next year. But well, maybe actually you know all of these kind of swift traditional money transfer process that it it takes long time and it costs some. You know we have to cut all of those process by one stop. Uh, last week when I have a meeting with. Uh, a delegation from uh, Union Pay China. Maybe we're gonna start with the Union Pay first. Maybe actually we need to work first. But anyway, according to them, actually they have developed this kind of blockchain-based actual money transfer service already. So maybe we're gonna uh, utilize their service. But anyway, in that even though in that case, actually we have to understand or we have to have some kind of our strategy. So right now we are in developing. Uh, this uh, money transfer service. Maybe it's going to be finished end of this year, maybe next year, early next year, we're going to start some kind of pilot test or pilot service. Then maybe we're going to start our business. Another one, this one had started already last year, but uh, a, some kind of uh, Basically, if you have some problems and you need to have some kind of insurance people, the process of claim those kind of the insurance service is not easy and complex. That's why we started this uh, business last year. And because many few numbers of the hospitals, right now, six hospitals in Seoul City. In Seoul City, more than 300 hospitals are their business. I mean, general hospital, not clinics. So because of the few numbers of hospitals, Last year, actually, we uh, started this insurance claim service, but number of these kind of transactions, very few, 20, 30, number of amount is very, actually, little. This year, uh, we're going to kind of expand more hospitals, more than 20 uh, general or uh, big uh, hospitals. Then maybe we're going to see more, what's the impact, or what's the benefit, or what's the, you know, it's kind of lost or what the problem. But anyway, we started the last year and we are in learning process. What is the blockchain? How we secure those kind of the health, health record by using blockchain technology? And it's a big organization. Number of employees or actual Korea post is 43,000. So we have to understand all this potential first. So we are learning process by using this model or uh, the insurance claim uh, service. So we are accumulating our experience, how we deal with, how to, what's the blockchain. Blockchain technology itself, as you know, actually is kind of evolving, changing, you know, or from time to time. So we are learning by using this, uh, uh, the project. Another one, 
This one is uh, kind of jump, uh, kind of platform-based service. The first one, uh, personal office, uh, the box service, also kind of the plat uh, platform. Around 70 million users every day, more than 70 million users. Some users, they use it once or 10 times or 100 times each day. They can create or they can make some transition, transactions. This one also, we're going to make some kind of a platform to, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to utilize or to provide better service. Maybe actually Korea Post is one, one entity and customers and many corporate, private uh, business people or business entities, we need to make some kind of the group or uh, entity, big entity. So the purpose of this, uh, the creating new platform is to support local economy or small and medium-sized enterprises. Or we're going to uh, kind of make some kind of uh, test, uh, test opportunity to, 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 to ensure the, the reliability of technology or the security, the level of security. Another one, business creation. So these are a little bit vague, a little bit not clear, but we want to make some kind of platform. So actually, what is the basic service of this platform? Ident identification. If you issue the visa, or I mean the passport, if you issue a driver license, or if you issue something, you have to have some kind of identification, authentication process. This platform actually provides those kind of uh, the digital ID service. Another one, payment. Uh, if you buy, if you stop by coffee shop, or stop by, you know, grocery or etc. So in that case, maybe cyber currency issue is involved. But uh, right now, we just want to provide payment service rather than cyber currency issues. So very simplified payment system. We're gonna provide based on those system. We're gonna provide payment system. Uh, of course, all of these uh, kind of you know transactions or the services are based on uh, blockchain. Uh, benefits and some kind of problems expected. You know, to the actual customers, maybe accessibility or they can enjoy some more convenient service. Blockchain service providers, of course, my organization. We have to have some kind of you know revenue from this project for the business people. Local, local governments, also, we're going to have some kind of uh, business. This is cost area. This one is kind of benefit area. We're going to see, uh, we are developing this platform maybe uh, late this year. We're going to start our business in uh, Naju city area. It's around two, three hour distance from Seoul city. It's a small city. The population of that city is 50,000 or so. So we're going to start in that area. Uh, last, so what we want to do uh, based on this kind of uh, blockchain-based effort. As I mentioned in the beginning, postal business model is very old and very traditional and outdated. There are many challenges. But of course, those challenges can provide new opportunities. So we're going to find more new opportunities to utilize blockchain-based those kind of the, uh, the approaches. In the area of the postal service, digital PO box already I introduced, maybe fulfillment platform. Nowadays, B2B area, Amazon and Alibaba in China, those kind of globalized or DHL in Germany. Uh, we made some kind of MOU with those uh, entities. All of those, nowadays, the trend of the logistics market is changing from door-to-door -door service to actual fulfillment area, B2B area. So we're going to start fulfillment platform uh, maybe late, late this year. And another one, omni-channel. There are many networks to deliver items or the parcels. So we're going to maximize or we're going to open the new window by using blockchain technology. Another one, the financial area. As I mentioned, insurance claims already. 
and the money transfer, we're going to start this one. We're going to speed up, but anyway, later this year, maybe next, next year. And credit data platform. We have around 15 million uh, users. So actually, they can, have, they can uh, accumulate their credit uh, points, and we're going to uh, make that kind of database service. Or online chain, you know, the payment area as well. These are some uh, cases or some areas where block, blockchain technology could apply for. And maybe we can create a new business area for the general for the government service because of the Korea Post is still government agency. We can help other government agents elevate their service quality and data exchange as well. These are some areas. Uh, we think of uh, applying uh, blockchain technology in Korea business area. Of course, this is not you know the, the, the total of the areas, but there are many other you know areas as well. But these are the main area. Right now, actually, on some some process, some services are right now ongoing, and many uh, many PO box is started and late this year. So. In the near future, we're going to provide these new services for the Korean people. But still now, actually, I'm not sure what's the impact, what's the benefit of this new approach or new, or new business in financial. Because we are suffering you know, some kind of deficit issue. This year, maybe uh, since 2011, we are recording you know, deficit issues. It's kind of big, te big tackle to me, to the Korea Post. Not only actually Korea Post, Japan Post, China Post, USPS, you know, in Germany, in England, and whatever. Many countries are suffering from those kind of financial deficit issues. Even though those kind of financial deficit, you know, we are suffering financial difficulties, we have to find some kind of innovative ways to deliver our service to the people. That's why we are or focusing on blockchain technology, not only actually blockchain, but also AI, big data, or Internet of Things. There are many technological solutions we need to combine to make more innovative service. But anyway, uh, these are some cases that Korea Post right now we are thinking of. So actually, I'm very happy to actually hear some voices from you, or I'm very happy to kind of get some uh, comments or some ideas or some suggestions to make these approaches more uh, kind of productive. I'm not sure times up or not, but uh, if you have any questions, please. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we have a few minutes uh, for questions. Yes. Go ahead. Go there. And Yogi. Um, Yes, thank you so much for your uh, night teaching. And uh, I have a question is, um, the firstly, so what kind of blockchain platform are you using? I mean, uh, Ethereum or <laughs> Ledger? <laughs> yes, just got t teaching us. And then another is, uh, who will be the miner? I mean, the computer system to run your blockchains? Mm -hmm. The question is, which blockchain platform um, is um, Korea Post yes, using? Thank you very much. <sighs> the second one is computer? T computer, uh, the miners. Miners. I think she's um, yes, thinking I of the public uh, yes. blockchain, whether you're using public blockchain or enterprise blockchain. Thank you for yes. your asking. Uh, as I mentioned, we are trying to several kind of you know, efforts. Uh, we do not want to choose specific uh, framework. For instance, IBM, or the other day, actually, we are meeting with SAP from German, or local vendors as well. For instance, LG, or there are several other, or the startups. We are working together. We are working together. But we do not want to heavily dependent on specific blockchain or the framework right now. So we want to be independent kind of approach. But you know, for regarding uh, insurance claims, uh, one local blockchain uh, uh, vendor, 
we choose actually we chose actually that vendor's approach. That vendor, according to my knowledge, is more based on IBM or framework. But uh, there are many ways to choose technological solutions. But we want to we want to be uh, stay in neutral rather than specific approach. How to make consensus? There are many ways, many many ways. But we're gonna pick up sp not specific one, more generalized one. And regarding se a second one, as I mentioned, the cyber or uh, currency issue is kind of big issue. But uh, of course, we can create some, you know, not only Bitcoin, but uh, there are many, you know, cyber currencies. But uh, basically, we do not want to create new cyber uh, currency and to exchange the currency with uh, some uh, local vendors. So cyber currency issue, we are considering. We are considering. For instance, in Naju City. We have data center in Naju City. Number of employees around 500. They have a small cafeteria inside of that data center. They develop some kind of cyber currency to buy coffee, cup of coffee, to buy lunch, something, something. They develop their own currency, cyber currency, cryptocurrency. But we not, do not want to expand outside of data center. We want, you know, have some more experience rather than how to exchange those cyber currency with other entities. Okay, uh, Kangwon. Thank you. And then um, Andreas, next. Okay. So uh, looks like, I mean, you have a lot of uh, business models that you are trying to apply blockchains. So what has been the most I mean, difficult challenges so far that you have faced uh, in uh, implementing these, uh, uh, I mean, services? Challenges. Is it oh. more technical challenge or more business challenge? Or, I mean, what has been your experience? Many challenges. First one, technology itself. As Professor Hong actually, he started this international conference today. I triple also, you know, they made some standard something. But uh, vendors, lots of vendors, meaning they have their own approach to make consensus from actual various blocks, various customers. Many ways and some standard and it's some kind of de facto still actually is developing stage. So technological barrier. Another one, uh, business area. Because basically our business is a little bit outdated, so we have to innovate our business model. But not only that one, but also other uh, financial area or the logistics area. In that area, they have our own some difficulties. I think the most difficult thing is behavioral or institutional barrier. Meaning, whenever I have a meeting with some experts from business or even from academia, they are suggesting, they give some kind of comments how to deploy this new approach in, for instance, or digital PO box. They, they provide, they, they you know, to propose some ideas based on their own thinking, based on their own experience. Because, you know, our organization is a big organization and this business, we have to provide 50 million Korean citizens, Korean people. We cannot choose a specific area or specific one. But one professor, for instance, he supports, let's say, you know, Bitcoin approach, or let's say IBM model. He's the best in the world. And the other day, another person or something. So there are many ways. So people who are involving in, uh, in this project, you know, they, you know, they make some kind of confusion. So meaning, I think behavioral or the cultural issue is very difficult. So that's why as we spent one year, I think one year, is, one year is not enough to understand, to make some more kind of, you know, consensus-based approach to deploy blockchain business or blockchain-based solutions. According to my observation, technology, you know, we can change. If this solution provide has some problem, okay, next year we're gonna change from this to another. But behavior, experience, is not easy to change. They have lived, they have spent their life in, for instance, uh, HTML-based, business model, or previously, they do not want to change. Blockchain, 
what's going on? We have to provide some kind of impact or the good image if they choose new approach. Those kind of behavioral barrier, behavioral misunderstanding, those kind of things, cultural base, cultural bias, it's very, very difficult to deal with. So this is why we spend one, I think one, maybe one year more, two years, not in, enough. We spend, as an organization, whole 50, 43,000 people. We have to master, we have to understand it fully, but we do not want to, I personally actually do not want, but we need to have basic knowledge regarding uh, uh, what's the potential of blockchain. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Andreas? Uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful talk. Um, two questions again. Um, the Bank of Canada had, I don't know if you're familiar with a project, uh, Jasper, it had like four phases of how to issue digital currency and do settlements of transactions and they experiment with Ethereum, with uh, Corda, with Hyperledger, and the MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is the equivalent for Singapore, had exactly the project you've been, uh, four phases, how to do settlements, how to issue Singaporean digital dollar and so forth exactly. Now, at uh, the fourth phase as we speak today, the Bank of Canada is working with the MAS in Singapore for cross-border settlement. So my first question is, do you as Korea Post is looking to work with an out of Korea country, another country, uh, to build different phases of, uh, of a project like that? Because you're not the only one that you have the same problem. There's a lot of other, as you said, like in Germany, in the United States, in China, in Japan, wherever, that you have the similar problems. So that's my first question, whether you're looking to have similar sandboxes. Uh, the second question is, generally speaking, uh, the Korean government is not the most friendly government when it comes to cryptocurrencies and blockchain and so forth. And what kind of, uh, of obstacle, impediment, problem has created uh, to you towards that process? So that's my second. Uh, where do you see that going, basically? Thank you for your question. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, last year I stopped by Shenzhen, China and have a meeting with a guy from Tencent, especially WeBank, the CEO of WeBank and CTO of WeBank. They have uh, completely finished their money transfer service to other countries. So we made some MOU with uh, WeBank, actually a subsidiary company of the Tencent. Actually, that uh, money transfer service is based on blockchain. And they have some kind of consortium, technological consortium. They are working with IEEE as well. There are many members from the Canada, from Singapore, you know, and from Korea even, from the, the, the Chase Manhattan Bank and BNP Paribas as well. They are expanding the kind of number of the consortium. Of course, we have, Korea Post has contact with other uh, the foreign uh, money transfer entities, including WeBank, including UnionPay, uh, including uh, Japan Post, Japan Post, they are dealing with banking services as well. And China Post last year, actually, in, October, in September, Korea, Japan, China, we have some kind of post, head of post um, summit meeting. So we are dealing with uh, money transfer issue. Last year in Japan, actually, we discussed a little bit, but this year we're gonna start, we're gonna continue to, you know, to use money transfer service based on our blockchain technology. So regarding first one, yes, we have contacted with some other players Unfortunately, not Bank of Canada and uh, the Singapore. Maybe we have a chance to later. Regarding second, uh, according to my observation, the uh, attitude to the cyber currency uh, in Korean, you know, the finance regulation entity uh, is not kind of more positive, meaning a little bit negative so far. As I mentioned uh, the previously, the Congresswoman, uh, the Madame Song, she mentioned actually, Korean government, we uh, are kind of more supporting to development of blockchain technology itself. 
not the cyber currency issues. So I have some kind of you know personal uh, the friend in uh, the, the financial uh, uh, regulation entity, and uh, still uh, the public side cyber currency issue is hot issue, but uh, in general it's a little bit kind of negative according to my observation. Maybe in the near future we're gonna see a different approach. But you know, this is not the only government. The other day, last day when I stopped by Manhattan to have a meeting with the, uh, JP Morgan president, actually Solomon, David Solomon, he mentioned how to you know, deal with uh, the blockchain-based cyber currency. Actually, we spent over three billion US dollars to, to, to JP Morgan. Actually, they provide some comments and suggestions to invest in uh, cyber currency funds or cyber currency assets. According to the actual, Solomon said, no, 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 not yet. We have to be careful because of fluctuation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.